uh, useful to have a look at. So, um, it's a two-part question. The first one, as I mentioned before, will just be talking about the cross-sectional area, and the second part talks about the volume. So all this um, body of text here says is it's a cylinder, it's got these measurements. The most important thing that it says, though, is the cross-sectional area is increasing at a rate of 0.032, and look at the units. The units say centimetres squared s to the minus 1. As soon as you see something with the units in this question, you want to extract what that information is. So what is this information telling me? What is equal to 0.032? The area differentiated with respect to time. Good. dA, dt, because if you look at the units, you've got area and you've got time. The other thing that you should also think about as soon as you've got that is what is it even talking about in this question? It's talking about the cross-sectional area. It's talking about this thing. So as soon as you see that, you should think, OK, well, what is the cross-sectional area? The cross-sectional area is pi x squared. And something else you should probably think as soon as you've come up with the formula is, well, I'm going to differentiate that because I know that's going to get used during this question. It got used in that first question. It's going to get used in this one. And that differentiates to 2 pi x. Now we're going to do the bit where we take the thing we're looking for and we split it apart. So for part A of the question, we are looking for dx dt, which we know is going to be a dx d something, d something dt. By having written out this and having written out this, we already know that the only option to put in here and here is dA. And many of you have done this bit already. This thing, I already have. This thing, I sort of already have. I just need to take the reciprocal of it. dx, dA, it goes x, a. This one goes a, x. So we need to take the reciprocal. So it will be 1 over 2 pi x multiplied by 0 0.032. But they have told us that we want to find it out when the radius of the rod is 2 centimeters. So x is equal to 2, so it's 1 over 4 pi multiplied by 0 0.032, which I believe gives you <coughs> 0 0.00255. Okay, hang on a second. Units here for dx dt. Excellent. Centimeters per second, and that's to three significant figures. Okay, that's part A of the question that we've got. You see what I mean, how like maths is starting to get to a point where there's nothing, there's nothing new here, but it's just reapplying things that we already know about and putting it into new contexts and new ways of doing things. That's the first part done completely, and you'll notice that was the one to do with the cross-sectional area. It didn't have anything to do with the volume. Part B, though, they are asking for the rate of increase of the volume also when x equals 2. So as soon as they've int introduced this new idea of volume, my instinct is to be like, OK, well, they're talking to me about volume. So I better work out what the volume of this cylinder is. What is the volume of the cylinder? The area of the cross-section times the length. The area of the cross-section times by the length, which is 5 pi x cubed. Now, just in case, if that's what v is equal to, I probably think it's going to be a good idea to find out what dv by dx is. It's probably going to be a good thing to do. That differentiates to 15 pi x squared. Actually, this is something worth pausing for a second. Some people will find the differentiating difficult. Whatever letter is on the bottom is the thing that you are doing it with respect to. You're going to have some things later, and I know you'll trip up because it will be a weird letter. It will be doing it with respect to h. And you'll be like, I'm not used to doing that. I'm only used to doing it with like x, or possibly even y now with impl implicit. But you might now be differentiating other letters as the subject, and you have to just try and carry that information in your head. Right, we're looking for the rate of increase of the volume. What is the rate of increase of the volume? Good, dv dt. It's the volume with respect to time. We pull apart this into two things. We're going to have a d dv and a dt. What's going to be my in-between bit? Yes. It's got to be dx. That's the only thing that I've got here. Now, luckily, this is all when x is equal to 2. It's the same as the answer to the first part of the question. 
So dv dt will be dv dx, which is 15 pi x squared, multiplied by dx dt. Because it's when x is equal to 2, it's this thing that we've worked out already. Do you think I should use this version, or do you think I should use this version? I th should use the exact version. I'm going to use this version that we have up here. And you'll see why in just a second. Maybe you can see why before it's already happening. So I've got multiplying it by 0 0.032 over 4 pi. Can you see what's happened? The pi's will cancel out, which is great. And the 4's will also cancel. So we actually know that this x squared is 2 squared. So we actually get that that's 15 pi times 4 times 0.032, all divided by 4 pi. So that 4 and that 4 cancels. Again, you could just put this all in the calculator, so but we like to. The 4 is x squared, and x is 2. And the pi and the pi cancels. So we just get 15 multiplied by 0 0.032, which works out as 0 0.48 exactly. So if you didn't use the exact value, you might get it, and you might round it in a slightly different kind of way. So that's why it's always good to use exact values if possible. And what would our units be for this, just to finish up? Centimeters cubed per second. The unit is my favorite thing to look for in these questions, because they're a giveaway of what it is that the question is aiming for. They're telling you, even if they don't say, like this thing here, dx dt, there's often giveaways of what's happening by looking at the units. OK? Um, I shall pause there, and I'm going to set you some questions.